How's it going everyone? So iOS 18.4 beta 3 is now officially released to the developer beta. And here's all the new features that Apple changed and added for this latest update. Now, before we get started, of course, timestamps will be in the description down below for your pleasure. But let's start off with other devices that also received the, the beta 3 update. So the Apple Watch, iPad, Mac OS, Vision OS, all received these latest updates you see right here. And when it comes to compatibility, every phone that's compatible on iOS 18 is fully compatible with you running this latest version of the developer beta of beta 3. So something that was promised on iOS 18 and originally was nearby interactions with like your smart locks and stuff by simply walking to up towards and it will automatically identify it and unlock without you having to tap on your phone. That is now compatible and enabled on, on beta 3 which means third-party developers of those smart locks can now utilize the ultra wideband that's built on on the Apple Watch and on the iPhone. And then another noticeable change can be located on the Apple Wallet app, as now when you tap over here, you now have pre-authorized payments where previously, during the earlier betas, it used to just been subscription and payments. So they retitled that from previous betas. And then something I discovered, if you're somebody who uses third-party messenger apps like Facebook Messages as an example, gen emojis are now compatible to be used on WhatsApp, Fe Facebook Messenger, or other third-party apps as well. So you can literally generate like quick gen emojis right here on the spot on other social media platforms. And then if you have the Apple Intelligence feature enabled on your action button, now you have an indicator telling you to long hold to open up Apple Visual Intelligence. So this will apply if you're using Apple Visual Intelligence on the action button on like an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max or the 16e as we have here. But a new tool that was added to us for Apple Vision can be located in the camera app. If you scroll down to the camera section and then tap on camera controls. And if you go down, you will see a new launch visual intelligence and you can enable press and hold. So now you have the ability to turn that off. So now whenever you long hold, it doesn't do anything if you don't want Apple intelligence to pop up on your side button over here for your action control, your camera control. Because as we know, this camera button right here, if you long hold, it will launch Apple visual intelligence. But if you don't like that, now you have the ability to just go back in here and disable it and then long hold, it's not gonna do anything. So all you're left with is the camera control. And then if you launch the podcast app, it will tell you that there's new widgets now that got added because we have a new splash screen window animation now where we can now add a widget for our podcast library as well as shows that we follow widget. And then if we play like a podcast or something or even like a YouTube video, if you go down in control center and you tap the top portion, now we have quick access to our microphone settings regardless if we're on a phone call or not because I'm just playing a simple podcast and I have access to this because if we do the same thing on the previous version of iOS 18.4 here I have a YouTube video playing I don't have access to this at all it doesn't pop up and if I do the exact same thing on the iPhone 16 Pro that's on the latest software and we launch like this YouTube video I'm gonna lower the audio real quick repeat the same process it launches automatically but something tells me it's currently being bugged or tweaked because uh, if we unselect automatic it's really dimmed and almost grayed out and it bugs each and every time I do that so this might be a bug I'm not sure if this is a feature or maybe Apple's tweaking it to the point where they're trying to perfect this so it's a dedicated feature but as of right now this is how that works kind of interesting Again, this feature will normally only work if you were like in a phone call conversation, but now you have access to it regardless on any media that you're using, or even if the media is off, I still have access to it. And then if you use the Apple Sport app, if you go into the App Store, yeah, you saw the Apple Vision, I'll talk about that. Actually, I'll talk about it right now. So the Apple Vision Pro app can now be installed separately on the App Store, where previously this was only installed automatically if you had the Apple Vision tied to your Apple ID. So now you have the ability to download the app. Think of this like the Apple Watch app, where it's basically like your companion app for the Apple Watch. That is the Apple Vision version right here. But additionally, in the Sport app, if we click on it, now it actually supports more leagues, including Women's Championship and Formula One Racing. So we hit Update, tap Open, 
and go into my teams and we type in F1 you'll see Formula One racing you could track it and start following on the next events now when it comes to using your keyboard the new emojis I was recently added will now be featured on your most recently used emojis now where previously you had to manually search them up now will actually show up right here I guess that was a weird bug that Apple resolved and then if we launch the Apple News app, you know, you can now follow food recipes. But here it is on the previous version. And we enter the news app, not that one, this one. And we tap continue and go to follow and go into food. When you click on an article, the article itself has been redesigned slightly. As you can see, some of the categories and some of the ads I noticed have been moved around a little bit. So now it actually previously used to say by the author, but now it just starts with the author. And then if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, this is what I mean. There's like a new ad section, unfortunately, right there added. So they kind of tweaked it on the food recipe side of things. But those were the new noticeable changes I was able to discover on this latest beta update. So let's go ahead and talk about performance numbers. So before I updated my phone, I did do a Geekbench and these are our numbers we were experiencing. So we got a single core performance score of 3,500 and the multi-core around 3,600. So if we go ahead and launch Geekbench and run those scores right now, let's see what we get. CPU, start. So who we are, uh, 3400 versus 3500 we originally had but same multi-score score honestly these small numbers aren't really the anything significant as they're still pretty close to each other as the previous tests they're not too far apart this is very minor this will be very interesting to compare when we officially get the release date but the performance have been fluctuating but nothing significant and then if we get the thermal gun out real quick let's see how hot our temperatures reached we got a max of 31 Celsius, which is about equivalent of 89 Fahrenheit. So we did get a little bit hotter than my previous test. Typically my phone will always hover around 87 at most after these. So that's something that, that's some interesting numbers that we got this time. I'll keep updating you on future videos if this increases or decreases, or maybe it was just today. Even though today has been pretty cold, low 66, it's pretty cold in my room right now too. But in terms of the official release for iOS 18.4, we are expected to see this sometime during April, maybe the first week or second week. It still is hard to tell once we get the RC version of iOS 18.4. That's when we have a general understanding exactly when the date will be. But in terms of the public beta, should be released maybe tomorrow or likely next week on Monday. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything new on this latest version of iOS 18.4. Let me know in the comment section which one of these is your favorite and how's your experience been like on this latest version if you're testing it out on your device. But from my first hand experience, this one's been solid comparing it against the beta one. Beta three so far, I haven't had any bugs or issues so far like I did earlier on. Now, if you guys appreciate this video, like this video, and like to see me continue making these quick updated videos whenever Apple releases a new update, greatly appreciate if you can actually take the time to, to leave this video a like, as that not only strongly supports the channel, but lets me to understand that you guys do enjoy these type of in-depth videos whenever Apple makes a rolls out an update like this. So, thank you to those that hit that like button, like, and support the channel. Now, if you wish to watch more, maybe you haven't watched my CarPlay video. If you did, check it out right over there because that video literally just hit a million views not too long ago. So that's pretty impressive. A lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of positive feedback on that video. People learning new things on CarPlay that they had no idea they could do. So I highly encourage you to watch that video if you haven't yet. Because yes, I covered the ability that you could turn off the auto play whenever you walk in your car. I know a clever way to walk around that. So check that video out if you're also annoyed when you get in your car and it automatically starts playing music. Thank you so much for watching.